Hello, 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 everybody. Happy Marvelous Monday. How are you all doing today? Hello, Latita. Thank you so much for tuning in, sis. I appreciate you, sis. Did everybody have a good day? Did you have a great weekend? I feel like it's been so long since we last met. We've had storms over the past few weeks, and it seemed like something was going on on a Monday with the weather and rain and thunder and lightning and power going down. So wherever you're tuning from, I hope that you're safe. I hope that you're well. It is, would you believe it is storming again? It just seems to storm on Mondays. But anyway, we're here. I'm here. You're here. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm Carissa Spann, the landlord and tenant coach. And I just want to say welcome to all of those who are tuning in for the very first time. Listen, this is what I do each and every Monday. I share information that helps landlords as well as tenants. My only goal is to provide information with a clear understanding that will help um, the rental community as a whole. So whether you're a landlord, you know someone who is, or maybe you're a tenant, a renter, a residential tenant, or you know someone who is, I promise that this live is for them. So every Monday at 7.30 p.m. right here on my Facebook page or my YouTube channel, this is where you can find me sharing information that will bring about a positive change for so many people. So if you had an opportunity to check out the description today, we are talking about renting to or from or avoiding imposters. All right. So please look at the description. Check it out. I believe here's what I here's what I strongly believe. All right. I'm not God. I can't predict the future, but I strongly believe that we will see an increased number of imposters. Here's why I say that. As we are coming out of the pandemic, okay, so let me just back up. Let me just start by saying that a lot of mom and pop landlords, that means small landlords, people who are not, um, uh, they are not like large investors as pertains to being rental property owners, right? So mom and pop landlords, they are the ones who have been hit the hardest from tenants who have not paid rent. We are still in the midst of the pandemic. The eviction moratorium in many cases and in many jurisdictions and states have been extended, right? So that means that there are essentially more protection for tenants, okay? Now, not all tenants, let me just say this, not all residential tenants are guilty of not paying their rent because there have been a lot of tenants who have not missed the beat. They continue to pay their rent or maybe they are in some sort of housing subsidy program and they were not impacted financially. They paid their rent portion, no problem. However, there is a large group of tenants who have not paid rent. So whether they had the income, maybe they lost their job, I don't know. All I know is a lot of landlords are hurting right now because there are tenants who are not paying the, the rent although there are resources in the community. So if you've been following me, you've been watching me, you know that I've been sharing that there are resources available in the community, right? And so I share this information so that tenants will know where to go to try to get assistance to pay their rent if they're delinquent, as well as helping landlords better understand how they can help their tenants. Now, if you've watched my previous lives or you watched a replay and you are a tenant or a landlord who's in a situation where rent is delinquent and you still have not reached out. I don't know what you're waiting on, but the funds are not always going to be there. Currently, there are still a lot of states. There are a lot of cities and jurisdictions that still have assistance to help tenants and landlords. So there's really no reason for anybody to be delinquent. All right. If you need information, please inbox me. Anywhere in the United States, I will provide as much as possible resources to help you, Mr. and Mrs. Tenant, or to help you, Mr. and Mrs. Landlord, because it's, I promise you that it's always better when we work together, right? And so that's just my philosophy. So today we're talking about how to avoid imposters. So because the eviction moratorium is close to an end, right? It's close to expiring in many cases. But for others, it's been extended, right? So I share that. Here's the thing. There are going to be a lot of tenants who will be displaced. There are going to be a lot of tenants 
who will be evicted. I've said it before. I'll say it again. There is going to be a tsunami of evictions coming. There are a lot of landlords who are desperate to get tenants out of their rental property. As a landlord or a property owner, the worst thing that you can have happen is to have a rental property where you're not receiving any income. You have no, no rent money coming in. Listen, here's what I teach landlords, right? Um, I teach landlords how to create systems. Number one, to create a system which will attract quality tenants. That means understanding what type of tenant you want in your rental property. Secondly, how to fill vacant rental units, whether they're your rental properties or you're managing someone else's rental property, right? I show landlords how to put systems in place to create this type of income generating revenue because at the end of the day, it is a business. And you already know my philosophy. If you have been watching me for an indefinite period of time, my philosophy is very simple. Treat it like a business. It will pay you like a business. If you treat it like a hobby, it will pay you like a hobby. So you must, Mr. and Mrs. Landlord, have systems in place that will protect you and your rental property. It is a business. And so income should be coming in. Unfortunately, there are so many landlords who are impacted negatively. There are no financial, um, there's, there's no really no, no revenue coming in when a person, when a tenant isn't paying rent. And so we're going to talk about how to avoid imposters because people are going to be desperate. Number one, people are going to be extremely desperate to have a place to call home. They're going to be desperate to have a roof over their head. And so if they have to go through this wave of tsunamis, um, uh, I'm sorry, tsunami of evictions that, that's coming, they're going to sometimes, in many cases, be desperate. So you're going to see some things, you're going to see some red flags, and you're going to hear some horror stories of situations that are going to happen. Some things are inevitable. Some things are unavoidable. You won't be able to avoid it. But what you can do is when you have this information, you'll recognize the red flags when you see them. And so today, that's what this live is about, just going through the process. This is for landlords as well as for tenants. So I'm going to share three tips on each side, three tips that will help tenants to avoid landlord imposters and three tips that will help landlords avoid tenant imposters. All right, so I'm going to get into the discussion on today. If you have comments, if you have questions, please drop it in the chat box. Please let me know where you're tuned in from. I love to know where my viewers are tuned in from because I like to give information that will help you in your jurisdiction. So anywhere in the United States, um, just go ahead and drop it in the box for me. You know what? But before I do this, I know some of you have been watching for a while. All right. I want to do two truths and a lie because there are a lot of people who are watching who don't know anything about me. Right. So really quickly, I want to do two truths and a lie. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give three statements and two are going to be true and one is going to be a lie. OK, so in the chat box, I want you to write or just jot down one, two or three, which one you think is a lie. All right. So um, I wasn't prepared. So let me just um, note my um comments and i'm gonna I'm make i'm gonna share with you and i want you to tell me which one you think is the tr which one you think is a lie all right so all right so the first one is okay so here's the first one first i'm gonna give three right so i'm gonna give three comments i'm gonna give three statements and you tell me which one you believe is a lie all right so the first one is I grew up in the country and I enjoy riding pigs for fun. All right. So that's the first one. I grew up in the country riding pigs for fun. The second one is I, I love riding motorcycles. All right. And then the third one is I have two children. So I want you to take a guess whether you know me, you don't know me. I want you to take a guess. I want you to put in the chat box which one you think is a lie, one, two, or three. So let me repeat it. So the first one is, I grew up in the country riding pigs for fun. 
The second one is I enjoy riding motorcycles. And the third one is I have two kids. So in the chat box, I want to see your comments. I want to see your response. Which one do you think is a lie? Hello, Joseph's Queen. Hey, Juice. Happy Marvelous Monday. Hello, Kimberly. Thank you for tuning in from Charleston, South Carolina. Hey, Pete. Okay, so I see your responses as they are coming in. Okay, so Pete, you think the first statement is a lie. Okay, let's see. All right, who else? Who else? Two truths and a lie. All right, Kimberly, you think the first statement is a lie. Okay. Miss Butler, you said number one is false. Okay. Kim, you can only pick one, all right? You pick one and three. Hey, Jason, thank you so much for tuning in. Happy Marvelous Monday. All right, you said one. Deborah, you said three. Pete, you said <laughs> if you're scared of dogs, I know you're scared of pigs. Okay. All right, V, you said number one is incorrect. All right, so... All right, let me see. Let me see who got it right. I am afraid of dogs, Pete, and you know that, okay? You know that I'm afraid of dogs, but that's only because I was bit by a dog. Yes, although I am a country girl. So the correct answer is number three. Number three is a lie. I do not have two children, okay? For fun, I grew up in Bumpus, Virginia. I lived in Bumpus, Virginia, and yes, I did ride pigs for fun. It was so fun. Um, I know a lot of people can't imagine it. And a lot of people ask me, well, how the heck did you ride a pig? Like, did you put a harness on it? No, we just we just got on the pig and we fell off in the in the mud and the pig pen. And it was really nasty. It was really funky. But as a child growing up in the country and you really didn't have a whole lot to do, you know, that was fun. That was fun for me. You know, we we made club houses out of um, the um, Pete, what you call those things, those those pallets. I'm, I'm sure I didn't get that correctly, but you know, like the, the things that they deliver items and stuff on, um, what is it called? Pete, put it in the comment box. We used to make clubhouses out of that. So yes, I rode pigs for fun. Um, hey, Cecilia, thank you so much for tuning in. <laughs> Pete, don't be done with me. Thank you for tuning in from Fort Washington. Kim, see a fun fact you didn't know about me. I rode pigs. So I went from riding pigs to riding motorcycles. So um, the lie is that I have two children. I do not have two children. I have. Thank you, Pete. Thank you for that. Um, pallets. Yes, that's what I thought. So no, I don't have two children. I have four children. So that was a lie. All right. So let's get into the discussion for today. And thank you for playing, going along and playing uh, the game with me. Um, that's right, Ms. Butler. See, something that you didn't know. Listen, Kimberly is my cousin and she didn't even know that, right? But yeah, I, I'm a country girl and I enjoyed it. I really did. Um, but you know what? I can honestly say that I am thankful for a lot of the experiences that I had in life and a lot of people. And this is why I tell people, never judge a book by its cover. Never take things for granted, things that you have, your upbringing, your education, your skill set, your job. Um Never take anything for granted. You don't know what somebody else has gone through. You don't know the life that they live to arrive at the place that they at now. Um, and so I have had a lot of um, experiences in life that has kind of helped to cultivate who I am as I have evolved into who I am today. Um, Pete, you said you knew that. Hey, Jennifer, thank you so much for tuning in. All right, so let's get into the discussion. We're talking about avoiding imposters. All right, so if you know somebody who is a tenant, I see a lot of landlords on here, a lot of landlords. I see a lot of housing providers on here um, on my Facebook as well as my YouTube channel. I want tenants to tune in. Please share this with somebody who you know is a residential renter. I want to share information because sharing is caring. And if I share information today that is helpful for you, Please hit that like button and please do subscribe to my YouTube channel, please, so that you'll know when I'm live and I am online. All right. So first and foremost is this. Let me get into the discussion because I don't want to hold you long. I'm going to share tips first for 
Um, let me see. Should I share tips for tenants first or for landlords first? What do you think? Okay, since I do have more landlords here, I'm going to share tips for you first. All right. So first thing first, how to avoid tenant imposters. Okay. Again, I'm sharing tips for landlords and I'm sharing three tips for tenants. So the first thing is when it comes to tenants, okay, I've seen tenants do a lot of things. Tenants will create a um, an avatar, if you will. They will create an avatar that doesn't truly represent them. It represents somebody else, right? So they will create um, fake pay stubs. They'll create fake income statements. And it is going to happen because tenants are going to be evicted. So they're going to be desperate to rent a place. They're going to need somewhere to live. And because they are going to be evicted, that's public information. So they are not going to want a new landlord to have that information. So here is my tip, my number one tip for you as a landlord. Please verify the identity of every person that is going to rent your property. You want to check their birth certificate. First of all, don't just check it. Make a copy of their birth certificate. Make a copy of every social security card. That's for every person that's going to live in that rental property. And for everyone that is going to be 18 and over, you want to make sure that you get a photo ID. You're going to hear stories. Oh, I don't have it. I lost it. I misplaced it. I don't have the money to go and get it. You cannot verify identity without these documents. Make it a requirement. Put it in writing, if you will, but make sure that you are at the very least not overlooking the small details, because sometimes that could be a red flag and a great indicator that this might be an imposter. Listen, I had um, I shared with my class. For those of you who know, I teach property management. So I shared with my class um, how law enforcement officers. I had an officer to come in and he works with the rental housing community. And he shared with the class how um, someone rented one apartment from, let's say, a parent company. So I'll just call it ABC company, right? So ABC is the parent company. All right. And building one is in one community and building five is in another community. So one person rented two different apartments under the umbrella of that parent company, did not pay rent, but neither did they provide all the documents required to verify that they said they were the person that they claimed to be on paper. And so that one person um, never got evicted because he knew the system and he beat, he listen, he beat the system twice with the same company, two different rental properties. So building one, he got in, he wrote fake checks. He didn't have a, um, he didn't have the verifications necessary, but they still rented to him anyway, because he had a polished look. He talked great. He talked educated. He sound well. He's, he crossed um, every T and dotted every I, right? He was a well put together person. He ripped the first landlord, the first property manager off. Same company. He went to another rental community under the same organization. Moved in, didn't pay rent. Neither did he provide documentations to prove who he said he was on paper. And yet they also allowed him to move in. And so now he has this large outstanding rental balance that this landlord or owner, they're never going to collect because He's not even a person that he claims to be on paper, but because he was a smooth talker, he got in, he smoothed him over, you know, he kind of wooed them and he got what he wanted. He got to stay rent free. So don't let this happen to you. Please make sure that you verify the identity of every person, even children, unless they're babies, they may not have a social security number at that time. And it's okay if they don't. Um, but any child over the age of six, usually it's six. Um, and there are some situations where um, sometimes children slightly over six may not have a social security number, but in many cases, children under six may not have a social security number, but typically over six, they have a social security number 
which denotes that there is a social security card that the parent or guardian can provide you. Okay. If they don't have it, give them time to get it. But here's what you want to do. You want to give them the checklist. When they express an interest of your rental property, you want to provide all of that documentation up front so they'll know the application process. They'll know the requirement. They'll know the things you're looking for. Okay. And when they submit that application, they should submit everything at one time. Okay. First and foremost. So let me go to my second point and then I'm coming to your comments in the chat box. If you have questions, drop it in the chat box. All right. Secondly, here's the thing. When it comes to background check, you want to verify the uh, the background of individuals. Now, you cannot discriminate to say that you're not going to, you're flat out automatically not going to rent to someone who has a criminal record. Please check the law in the state or the jurisdiction that your rental property is in. Because in many places, you cannot automatically deny somebody because of their um, their background check. You can do a conditional um, approval of the rental application. All right. So meaning that let's say, for instance, Kim, let's say I rent or I'm interested in renting from your community and I pass all the, you know, my credit is good. You verify my income. That's good. I make decent money. I can afford to live in your rental community. And you say, well, Carissa, we are going to conditionally approve you just contingent upon your background check that we will complete the criminal background check. And so if I pass the other, you know, um, the other checks, okay, but I don't pass the, the criminal, you can deny me at that point, right? So, but I just don't want people to think that they can automatically deny a person because of their criminal background. Now, there are some charges um, that you may be able to just automatically, you know, eliminate, right? You can eliminate people from renting if, for instance, maybe if they have a felony and they are on the sex offenders registry. If that is your policy, you can definitely do that. All right. But you definitely want to run a background check and there are programs, there is software available um, that will help you um, run background checks. Now, here's what I used to do when I first started my property management business um, over, over 10 years ago. I would collect the application fee and I would process the background check online. And so now, because I am more in tune with technology, I will allow my tenants to pay. Well, let me not say tenants, because when they complete the application, they're not my tenant yet. They're a prospect, right? Or applicant. So I use software now where the prospect or the applicant will pay online for their own background check. And once it's completed, I'll get an email. The software, uh, the service provider, they'll send me an email to say, hey, Carissa, uh, prospect Jane Doe has completed the background check. Please go online to check it out. And it will provide me with all of the information that I'm looking for. Income, credit, rental history, eviction history nationwide. If you want that information, please email me. I will get it to you. My email address is carissaspan at gmail.com, carissaspan at gmail.com. Dot com. All right. So that's my email address. So if you that's for people, landlords who want the software um, to go online, well, to give applicants or prospects that information to go online to get it. All right. So email me and I will definitely get it to you. All right. So here's a third tip for landlords, because I'm talking about imposters. I'm talking about tenant imposters, how to avoid tenant imposters. Third and final tip for landlords for today is this. Do not ignore the red flags. Don't ignore the red flags. If you see a red flag, pay attention. Flags are there for a reason. Okay. Here's the mistake that I made early on. Okay. Because I have a heart for people and I wanted to do the right thing by helping people. So sometimes I overlooked my own policies and procedure that I put in place. OK, I made that mistake a long time ago and I'm sharing this with you so that as a landlord, you don't make that mistake. I've made that mistake for me and for you. So here's what I did. I ignored a few red flags and it came back to bite me in the rear end in a major way. OK, so one of the things that I did and I shared this a while ago, how I helped the young lady 
she was a single mom. She was in college and she was struggling, right? She was working. She was in college and she had this little boy. And I recalled a time where I needed help. I was like her, a single mom working, trying to get my life together on the right track, but I just needed a little help. And somebody gave me help, right? Not all red flags are going to turn out to be bad apples or seed of Chucky. However, there is a large or majority of people who will end up being bad apples when we ignore red flags. And so I let this young lady move in. Now, on her background check, all right, it came up the, uh, the fact that she had been evicted twice, not once, but twice. She had been evicted twice. That was a red flag. Okay. One eviction is a red flag, but two evictions within three years. Mm, I still gave her a chance. She promised, oh, Miss Carissa, thank you so much. I promise I'm going to do the right thing. I promise I'm going to treat your rental property right. I promise that I'm going to treat it like it's my own. And I was like, you know what? I believe you because I'm a good person, right? And that's what I would do. But everybody's not like me. So she got in this rental property. She paid rent for maybe like a month or two months. Month three, she was a little late. She paid like around the middle of the month or something. So I reached out to him like, hey, Miss Tenant, this is Carissa. Um, maybe it's an oversight or maybe we just haven't received it yet. But your rent payment for this month um, hasn't cleared the bank. We, we haven't received it yet. And so she gave me some story how she was studying for her final exam and um, she hadn't been to work a lot. And so uh, her hours wasn't as much as she thought that they that it was going to be. And, you know, so she gave me this whole song and dance, blah, 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 blah. I mean, she pulled out the violin and she was, I tell you, she was pouring it on thick. Okay. So that was month number three. So she paid the rent by the end of month number three, month number four, no rent, month number five, no rent, month number six, no rent. Other tenants in the building are complaining because now her boyfriend is beating her up and the police is being called and a whole bunch of people are hanging out in the building. They're doing a number of things in the hallway. Now, mind you in this building, okay, she was the only young person. So everybody had been there for years. They were seasoned tenants. They had been there for years. OK, so they were a lot older. So obviously they were not happy about the activity that was going on in this apartment. But because I ignored the red flags I saw, I had to deal with that. And unfortunately, I did have to evict her. She was my first eviction. And let me just tell you, I was happy to evict her. But I was sad that I had to do that because I have a heart for people. And when I saw the U.S. Marshals come and put her kids' toys out on the sidewalk, yo, that crushed me. I have kids and I would never want my my kids never experience that. And it just it just did something to me that another, you know, that a child had to experience that seeing their things being put out on the street. And so don't ignore the red flags. That's why I live by the philosophy now that if you treat it like a business, it will pay you like a business. And that's why that is my philosophy. OK, because a lot of us, we do have a heart to help people. But sometimes people will take advantage of your soft spot. So have a business, have a business practice in place that will protect you as well as the rental property. All right. So before I get into the tips for the tenants, tenants, please listen, listen carefully. I got some juicy tips for you as well. All right, I'm going to go to the comment box because I don't want to overlook anybody. All right. Hello, Bishop Statman. Thank you so much for tuning in, Mama Bishop. Hey, Derek. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in, sir. Hey, Kenyatta. All right. Let's go to your comments. Derek, you said heart and business never go together. Derek, you get it. Derek, I know you understand it. All right. Tanika, you said, I'm definitely learning. Please, Tanika, I know that at some point you're going to be a phenomenal landlord. So please take plenty of notes. And I'm glad that you're here with me today. All right. So now I'm sharing tips. I'm sharing information for tenants. Okay. Tenants, are you ready? All right. You ready? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready. If you're a tenant, if you're ready, give me a thumbs up. Give me a heart. Give me a like. Give me something. Share it, if you will. Share it with your good girlfriend who's a tenant. Now, listen, I have some friends of mine 
their tenants, and they are horrible tenants. I hope that they're watching now. But let me share this information because sharing is caring. And I promise you that I will always keep it real. Okay, so here are tips that are for tenants on how to avoid landlord imposters because let's keep it real and let's be 100% honest. Let's keep it 100, as my son says. Mom, let's keep it 100. All right, I'm keeping it 100. All right, all landlords are not good landlords. All right, true story. There's a landlord in the DC metropolitan area. This landlord was taken to court because he was a slum landlord. He has a lot of property in DC, okay? In the DC as well as the Maryland area. He did not make repairs in the rental property. The tenants took him to court. The judge ordered him to make repairs. The judge even ordered that this landlord make payment, put payment to set aside money for repairs. And if he did not do it, he would go to jail. Okay. It does happen. Landlords, if you're not making repairs, you can go to jail. You can be fined and jailed or both. Okay. True story. It hurts my heart because this guy um, was someone who came to me and wanted me to represent him. But unfortunately, my business ethic would not allow me to touch his property because it was that bad. I cannot put my name on it. Anything that is deplorable, any person that is not integral, any person that is not willing to do the right thing, I can't work with you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, not sorry. So this landlord, he did not make the repairs. He did not put the money in escrow. Or he didn't make sure that the money was in the registry for the repairs that were needed. And maybe he thought that he could just keep, you know, smooth talking and a judge would just go for it. Well, he found out the hard way that it's not a joke. It's not a game. They locked his tail up. He got locked up for not making repairs and he ended up losing the property. I mean, come on. It's a business. If you treat it like a business, it's going to pay you like a business. But if you're a slum landlord, and if you're not making repairs, um, then you probably should get someone to help you or maybe just come out the business altogether because um, tenants, they're not just a number. They're, they're not just, you know, being a landlord is so much more than collecting money at the beginning of the month. Derek, I know that you can agree with this, that it is a business, right? You want to definitely collect your money, but you also want to make sure that you're taking care of the maintenance repairs that are needed in these rental properties, because that's what tenants deserve. When they pay you, they pay to have a roof over their head, but it should always be decent, safe, and sanitary. That's the law. I don't make it up. I just share it with you because sharing is caring. So here's some tips for tenants. Verify if the property has a rental or a business license before you rent a property. In many jurisdictions, landlords are required by law to have a business license or a rental's license. I know a lot of landlords, they're going to they're gonna jump off now. They're not going to like this information that I'm sharing and I am okay with it. All right. Because this is free information. Free 99 won't even matter to me. I'm just trying to help somebody today. All right. Make sure that the property has a business or a rental license. And so landlords, if you don't know whether or not your property is supposed to have that info, I'm sorry, supposed to have a license, um, check with the county, check with the city and that jurisdiction to see, because you don't want to get yourself in a jam. The laws are in place to protect you as well as the tenants. Okay. So please make sure that you have a renter's license or a business license. If it is a requirement, here's my second tip for tenants today. Ask for the application process, ask for the policies and procedures up front. All right. Here's why you want to do that. Um, let me just go back to the renter's license or the business license, because sometimes people may not own the property. They may not even be affiliated legally with the property and will rent it out. I've seen people do it. I've seen people rent property. I don't know how they got the keys. I don't know how they got into the property, but they had the keys. They rented it out to somebody else, created a fake lease, was receiving payment. And so when the owners show up, they're like, okay, well, Mr. And Mrs. Tenant, who are you and why are you in my house? 
And the tenant is like, well, my landlord, Joe Schmo, I got a lease. See, here it is. They don't know who Joe Schmo is. And Joe Schmo been collecting rent all this time. Verify that the property is licensed. Number one, ask the policies, ask the procedures, get it in writing. What are the rules? What are the regulations? You want to do that because you want to make sure that if there's anything, there's a red flag. Okay. Doing that process when you're asking those questions, you'll get a red flag if they're not legit. All right. So don't allow yourself to be in a situation where you're in a jam, somebody ripped you off because you won't be able to get that money back. I promise you. All right. And here's my third and final tip for tenants on today. Make sure you get a receipt for all money paid. The application fee, the moving fee, the holding fee, the security deposit, the pet fee, the dog fee, the pre-eviction fee, the whole grandma to the chain type of fee, whatever the fees are. And I promise you that there could be a lot of fees, right? So I'm, I'm joking, but there are fees and whatever you pay, make sure you get a receipt for it. I've seen people pay their money, hard earned money, right? They didn't get a receipt. And let's say there's a new property manager or a landlord um, that that sold the property to another person, but they still are going to acknowledge the application or whatever. Stuff happens and it's not what you know is what you can prove. Make sure that you are getting written receipts, a printed receipt, whether it's handwritten, printed, typed, faxed, email. If they send it by telegram, who cares as long as you get it in writing? OK, and so these are just some tips so that tenants can avoid the imposter landlords. I promise you that so much is going to happen in the upcoming weeks, the upcoming months, that it's going to be mind blowing to hear the stories that will take place. And so my goal, if I can, is to help people um, avoid going through these loopholes and to go through these traps that are definitely set up and people are just out to scheme whether it's their impo their their they're posing as a tenant whether they're posing as a landlord people are going to take advantage unfortunately of the system there's a broken system and there's so much that's going to take place across the country right um and unfortunately a lot of people are going to be negatively impacted. I can't help everybody because everybody don't watch this Monday live that you're watching. For those of you who have shared, everybody don't watch this. Everybody don't get this information. So please make sure that you share those tips. Okay. I see your question, Jennifer. You said, what if we pay online? If you pay online, that's fine. Because if you pay online, um, obviously you should have verified by now that this, this landlord is legit. Um, but if you pay online, that's fine. That's your documentation. As long as you can go online and you can see that you have a history of your payments, you can print that out. That is your proof. That is that is perfectly fine. A lot of places are starting to do that now. And if you are a landlord and you do not offer your tenants the opportunity to pay rent online, please do that. Please make it convenient for you to receive the rent payment. OK, sometimes the traditional way is good, but the traditional way don't always pay when it comes to being up to speed with technology and what's happening now. So what's happening in 2021 might not have looked like this back in 1990 when you first started out in the rental property business. So um, yeah, paying your rent online is definitely the way to go. It's a good thing. That's your receipt. You already know um, when you make the payment, you can document it, you can print it out, you can look back at it. Um, so um, yeah, great question. Um, so are there any other questions? I do hope that this information was helpful today. Are there any other questions, any other comments, remarks, observations? I'll wait a few seconds. Um, and so again, I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in. This is what I do each and every Monday, guys, right here at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my Facebook as well as my YouTube page. In the upcoming uh, weeks, I'll be sharing more information um, that will help tenants who are, unfortunately, who are going through the eviction process and how to get through it, um, as well as helping landlords understand how to pick quality tenants. Because at the end of the day, 
we want to treat it like a business, but we want quality tenants in these rental properties, right? We want to fill vacant rentals, not in 30 days, not in 60 days, but within a couple of weeks. And so I will begin to share more and more of that information. Um, those of you who have been following me, I know that you have um, been waiting on me to roll out my second round of my landlord master strategy class. It is a six week online class. Um, I did get emails today about that. I will be responding to your emails, but for landlords who are interested in um, learning how to put systems in place to show you how to attract your quality tenant. Where do they hang out at? What, what type of hobbies do they have? What are some things that they enjoy doing? It's learning how to market and advertise to your targeted audience to attract the quality tenants that you're looking for, um, but not violating laws because fair housing laws are in place. And what landlords don't know can and will hurt them. Many landlords have been sued. And let me just say this while I'm talking about being sued. Um, landlords who are not adhering to the eviction moratorium guidelines, right? So if you are a landlord and if you have changed the locks on your tenant, if you have put a tenant out without going to court, do know that the tenants can sue you. You can be fined up to $250,000. So please make sure. I know some of you are tenants. I have been inboxed by uh, several tenants asking about landlords who changed the lock. I had a young lady who emailed me last week. She says, Carissa, my landlord changed the lock. How can I get into the rental property to get my things? And here's what I told her. I'm not an attorney, but do not move. Because legally, she has a right to be there, although she had not paid rent for whatever reason. And it wasn't my business to ask why she didn't pay the rent. But all I do know is that laws are in place, okay? And landlords are not exempt. So if landlords are violating the law, they will be sued. They can be fined. So let me help you to help you to help somebody else avoid going through that situation. That would be a sad, sad day where landlord have a rental property, tenant not paying any rent at all, the landlord gets so frustrated. They take their property back. They change the lock. They put the tenant stuff out. They want to get somebody in there that's going to pay the rent. And the tenant turn around and sue them and win the case. That would be a sad, sad day. So don't allow yourself to be in that situation. So this is why I share information. Okay, the... Info concerning online class being offered. Hey, Mr. Ricks, thank you so much for tuning in. So V, um, let me share my email address because I want to make sure I'm getting you that information. All right. So V, here's my email address. Please email me. Let's have a conversation. So the um, the class will start September the 29th. I believe it is. I have a couple of classes. Um, September the 29th is the last Monday in September. Kim, if you're on, can you verify that date for me, please? All right. So it is a six week online class where we will meet not in person, but online. So if you are interested, please email me. You want this information. Um, I go I go deep. I go at least seven levels deep um, helping landlords create systems because at the end of the day, my goal is to make sure that you, my viewers, my colleagues, my peers, you are successful with your rental property business. There's going to be so much that's happening in the upcoming weeks and months that we have to be prepared for things that we have no knowledge of. And so having a system in place is going to be so important. Um, so thank you so much, guys, for tuning in today. I shared information on how to avoid imposters, tenant imposters, as well as landlord imposters. I hope that I've answered all of your questions. And if you have questions, if you're watching the replay, please go ahead drop it in the comment section, 
hashtag replay, ask your question. I will respond even if I am offline. And so again, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, thank you for joining me today. I hope that you'll join me next week, each and every Monday, right here at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is what I do. I enjoy doing it. So please make sure you're connected with me. Please, ma'am, please, sir, whether you're on Facebook, whether you are on YouTube. So here are my social media handles. All right. So find me on YouTube. Go ahead and hit that like button on my Facebook page and subscribe to my channel on YouTube. I do thank you again for your time. My time is up and I hope that you will join me next week. Even if you have to tune in late, I am okay with that. I promise you that when you get this information and you share it, it's going to change somebody's life, whether it's for you, whether it's for somebody else, because again, a educated an educated rental community. It works better when we all work together. All right. So my time is up and I thank you for yours. I'll see you all next week. Bye for now.